Hello friends, welcome back. It's Kimberly. We are doing some fun stuff today and it was inspired by this book, Bible Journaling with Kids. And it came in the Purpose Driven Essentials kit this month, but you can also buy it on Amazon. Um, I think she has a volume two now also. Her name's Chelsea and I can't remember how to pronounce her last name, which anyway. Sorry, Chelsea. Um, so one of the projects that she had in there was um, using celery as a stamp. So you'll see there's the end of a piece of celery on my desk. And I thought we'd have a little, uh, not necessarily contest, but a little fun kind of, well, I thought we'd just play around and like say, who makes a rose better, me or God? I'm just saying. Because like God made the celery one, right? Okay. And I carved that one out of um, rubber stamp material. So I thought, we'll just figure out whose stamp makes a better rose. <laughs> and then I was like, I was like, oh my goodness, what better place in the Bible than to do this in Mark chapter 10, when he talks about being uh where the children are being brought to Jesus and Jesus says that we need to be childlike. So, um, I do, I was just like, this is perfect because we're talking about a craft for kids. Um, but as you'll see here, it's pretty fun craft for grownups. I got to say, um, so, <laughs> um, let's just be childlike in God's eyes and play today with our Bible journaling. So, um, First of all, I'm just pouring out some paint colors that I have. I thought it would be fun to kind of do them um, a little bit variegated, which means putting a little bit of one color on and a little bit of another color. And it works, uh, usually works best if you use um, kind of the same color, but two different shades. Because then you don't have to worry about them mixing and making some weird third color that's really not what you wanted. So I just used two shades of pink. Um, you could also take like a dark pink and add some white paint to it if you want. Um, to make it a darker pink. Um, so you don't have to have that many colors of pink, but you can also do these in solid colors, obviously. So I just put some paint on my rubber stamp. I've used all sorts of things with this rubber stamp. I've used my Pit Artist big brush pens. I've used ink pads. I've used um, embossing. I've used paint. And so um, it's pretty fun. And then it, you can just wash it off in the sink really easily and um, do it again. So that was kind of a fun craft. So there's my rose. Um, I gotta say, I think the big brush pens are my favorite way to use this rose uh, stamp. I think you get the most detail out of it. And I usually uh, paint or stamp a circle behind it so it's not just white behind it, but I wasn't sure how this was gonna turn out and I knew I couldn't really do that with the celery. So we're doing it, I was gonna say apples to apples comparison here, but it's celery to rubber stamp. All right, I hope you guys are laughing by now because this is pretty fun, actually. <laughs> I'm just being a little goofy today. Um, and so now I'm just painting the some of this paint on the celery itself. Now you're going to want to, um, you could dip it in paint, but it might get really goopy. And so here we go. Here we go. Who did it better? Oh my goodness. You guys, you guys, this is so fun. Look at that. It's like almost a beautiful, perfect, like kind of uh, sketchy painted rose. Like you guys, this is incredible. I could think of a hundred different ways to use celery to make uh, cards, to make pictures, to, uh, can you imagine letting kids just go wild stamping with celery? And then you'd have all this printed paper and there, there was something bumpy behind my page. So it didn't, um, have a great impression so I'm just filling in some of the lines with paint um, but um, can you imagine like so if you want to be a painter and you love those painterly roses um, and you but you're just not sure you know how to do it chop off your celery and and just do this you guys I am so thrilled with this idea <laughs> I can't even tell you how much fun this is like I'm imagining can you imagine oh, making your own wrapping paper put butcher paper down on a big piece of, um, on a big table and stamp this all over the butcher paper. And then you have your own custom made paper and people will be like, oh my goodness, you painted roses all over this. And you're like, yeah, I, I did. I, I painted roses all over this. And your secret is celery. Okay, 
that's so cool. Okay, so now I don't have a great leaf green in acrylic paint, so we're using a neon green, and then this kind of weird, it's actually kind of a celery green, but it's lighter than I wanted, so we're gonna have some bright leaves, and at first I was like, oh god, that's gonna look goofy, and I'm like, no, it looks childlike, and that's what we're doing today. We're gonna have neon leaves, because <laughs> we are just having fun and playing, and, um, and again, I know I've mentioned it before, in my Bible uh, journal videos here, but I, I just think it's so true and worth reminding us of is that I think God absolutely delights when we use creativity and just have a ball, when we just sit down and have fun and um, just enjoy the gifts that he's given us. And if your gift for painting roses uh, ends at celery stamping, hey, just think how many cool roses you're going to be painting. If it inspires you to do something else or make other patterns or chop up other fruit and stamp them or vegetables, like seriously, people, this is fun stuff. I think God just gets a kick out of this. So, um, so I'm just painting some really, really simple leaves. I, I really like, I'm learning not to overwork painting because when I go in and I try to work too hard at it, it looks like I worked too hard. So there's a clue for you guys today too. Um, when you're painting, be childlike, just simple little uh, swipes of your brush usually look better than meticulous details that you keep going over and over and trying to fix. <laughs> just, just let it be people, let it be. Um, and um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Never, never has to be perfect. It, and especially homemade things like this, where you're having fun painting with a piece of celery, of course it's not gonna look perfect. It's, um, and I think that's partly the point of this. Um, so anyway, the, let me read you the verse. Um, we've all heard it probably quite often or over our lifetime, but while I'm drawing my page here, let's let's take a look at it. So um, this is Mark chapter 10, verse starting in verse 13, and it says, People were bringing the little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. That's a pretty strong word. And he said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, unless you are like these, you will not receive the kingdom of heaven. And he took the children in his arms and he placed them on his lap and blessed them. Okay, seriously, you guys, like it is, I think one of the biggest fallacies that we can um, jump into as Christians is thinking we have to hit some kind of... Um, spiritual maturity and that that spiritual maturity looks like maybe being all professorly at a theology school or being very scholarly and reading all sorts of books or um, knowing exactly everything so you can explain it perfectly to friends or I think there are important roles that people are called to, of course, to be professors of theology and to um, have our witness down enough that we can share it with a friend, um, enough that we understand it. But when we approach Christ ourselves, when we approach the Holy Spirit, when we approach God the Father, we are supposed to come as little children, which means we don't have the answer, right? So, um, and we don't have the answer for a lot of things. So there's a huge benefit to being childlike because you don't have to be anything you're not already. Now I'm just stamping down. I have this little roller stamp that I don't use very often and I thought it'd be kind of fun to sprinkle some words around the page like beautiful and I love Jesus and um, his grace um, just to add some fun little black uh, texture against the pink roses. Um, but if we don't have to know anything and in fact God likes it when we come to him and ask him for answers that is a huge bonus you guys because I think we get kind of stuck feeling like we should have things figured out by now whatever that thing is like maybe you're in the um another friendship that's just not going well and you're like you know I think I should have friendship down by now or maybe you're like me and um don't like cleaning house and would much rather paint with celery you're like you know I should probably have house cleaning down by now or maybe you're like um maybe every year at Easter the cross baffles you because of the pain Jesus had to go through and you think 
I should have this figured out by now. No, no. We're asked to be responsible, but when it comes to our approaching the throne room, approaching God, approaching the Holy Spirit, like I'm, I, this stamp came in the kit too, and I wanted to use it. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Cause the Holy Spirit, when I pray to the Holy Spirit, I need to come from a childlike perspective to be able to hear things back. If I come and I try to tell the Holy Spirit what to do, that's just, that's not the point. The Holy, Holy Spirit's here to give me more wisdom than I could ever have on my own, to give me ideas and direction and help and comfort than I could muster ever on my own. So I've, been learning more um or i've been like i'd never thought to pray with the name holy spirit i always pray dear jesus or dear lord or um i'd been trying you know to do abba daddy um just so i get different perspectives of who god is but somebody challenged me recently to pray to the holy spirit and i had never <laughs> just had never thought about that and um but it it brings a different kind of dependence because I have no idea what the Holy Spirit's going to tell me, except for it's going to line up with scripture. If I hear something that does not line up with scripture, I know that it was not the Holy Spirit speaking to me. But um, if I get to come to the Holy Spirit and I am invited to come and be childlike, then I can ask any questions and they're not a dumb question and I'm not going to get ridiculed. We wouldn't ask a child to know how to apply for a home loan, right? Like a five-year-old. No. Well, God doesn't expect us to have all the answers down to life either. Um, Even things we think we should know by now, the Holy Spirit is there to guide us. All we have to do is become childlike, which really means become humble. Because kids just don't know that there's stupid questions until they're told that there are stupid questions. And so if you were told at some point in your life that your questions were stupid or you should have it figured out by now, I just pray that this gives you a new perspective and a new spirit and a new way of approaching your prayers and um, and the God of the universe in a way where you can be childlike again. There are no stupid questions, none. Now, sometimes we don't always hear an answer back to our questions right away. But what I do with those is I kind of shelve them and I revisit them every once in a while or I write them in a journal so I can come back later and see if it was answered, but I didn't notice because I forgot that I had prayed it. Um, But sometimes I just assume that God's not answering it um, or the Holy Spirit didn't answer it for my own good. Um, Because Romans 28, Romans 8, 28 says God's working out all things together for good for those who believe. And so if God's not answering a question of mine, it must be part of a process I need to go through to continue to learn more, or I am um, being prepared for that answer, or he knows I'm going to discover it myself in the Bible, in one of these Bible journaling entries someday, and it's going to be so fun to discover it with him right then and there, so he doesn't tell me yet. We can, we can assume the best out of our God. All right, guys, I think God won this one. He made the pretty rose. <laughs> Have a great day and thanks for joining me. And if you do the celery thing, tag me on Instagram, Modern Mess Princess. I'd love to see your celery roses. (laughs) Bye.